Hello and welcome to a freebie free cast on Angel Gate. Starting off we have a max power plane as the tech marine on the top side of the map. We have a Guxus on the mid side of the map plane as the Farseer and finally in the bottom side the one, the only, the beast. Then plane as the Apothecary. Meanwhile for the red team we have Zetalk playing as the Warlock up against Max Power in the top side. Given that it's the Warlock and given that the Warlock can always get the Immolator, I doubt it we will see turrets from Max. Given that the Immolator is able to take down a turret unless it's being repaired by two units at the same time, a single burst of that Immolator or the ability Immolate will be able to take down turrets and it's also very effective against beacons although it needs more than one Immolate ability. To actually finish it off we have Matuska playing as the Lord Commissar making his way towards the top side of the map. He is in the middle area of Angel Gate and finally for the team we have Black Label playing as the Force Commander up against Ven here in the bottom side of the map. Already one scout being forced off here, a second scout squad also forced off losing that one scout model. Meanwhile, Ven doesn't look like he has lost any models so far. Scout models are actually quite expensive here. And in mirror matches such as this, model losses are probably a bit more important, especially a Space Ring mirror match. Model losses are very important <laughs> in terms of who's going to win or lose, especially if it's a tactical marine model that does go down. It can be quite painful, especially if you do not lose a tactical marine model in that same engagement. Structure going to go down here into the building. I'm pretty sure it doesn't do damage to units inside the buildings. I'm not actually 100% sure on that, but Dire Avenger is going to be vacating that building here. Star Avengers here from Zetalk throw down a grenade here, throw down at the entrance of the building here, taking down two tactical marine models here away from max power. The squad will be able to live overall, but it's always nice to throw it at the entrance of the building so that your opponent leaves the building thinking that they're going to take a lot of damage, they leave the building to try and avoid that damage except for the grenade is at the entrance of the building and instead all the units that are leaving the building end up being on top of the grenade and taking even more damage and more likely to lose a squad by doing that. If you are in a situation like that where you're inside the building it's better to just sit in the building and take the damage because you are less likely to lose a models and definitely less likely to lose a squad especially when it's a full health squad here. But here Ven going to be losing a tactical marine model unable to take it on down of his own here putting Black Label maybe slightly further ahead in that match grenade getting thrown down here to the Guardian Weapons team here from Zetalk. There is a second grenade available potentially from that second Dire Avenger squad. They do have full energy although they may have been on cooldown still. Grenade is trying to get thrown from that Dire Avenger squad because all the energy get drained a couple of times but the model that was throwing the grenade got killed multiple times there and ended up with no grenade throw in the end and in the yeah, red team will have to back away a little bit pull back and regroup here. Zetalk is actually retreating all the way back to base. He does have his Warlock on the field. Could see an Immolator from him, especially with all the buildings as well, especially with this beacon going up an Immolator would be a really nice choice. The Immolate ability will do damage to units inside the buildings and the Immolate does extremely well against the beacon and against turrets if there are any on the map later on. My Black Blade but the bottom lane going to go for double fully upgraded scouts here. Not really sure how well this is going to work given that it's shotgun scouts instead of sniper scouts. Sniper scouts I think would be a really good choice here given how short the distance is between the two bases of the boss and sniper scouts are fairly well protected against melee units especially if they sit in this area. It's very close to the base turret so they don't have to run too far to get some protection but shotgun scouts should work out quite nicely as well. Of course commander may even consider getting a power sword as well in this bottom matchup here. Power sword are very effective against heavy infantry, the sanguine chainsword here for Ven. Going to be doing a lot of work here. But should have maybe focused down those tactical marines with his APO instead of the force commander. But I think the APO going to be unable to actually get down any models here. Shotgun blast is available for the second scout squad here as well. That APO could go down if the shotgun blast knocks him onto his feet, but in fact, he may even just go down. The Shotgun Scout's going to chase down and we'll be able to finish him off there. Shotgun Scout's been able to fire on the move here. Going to try and chase down some Tactical Marines here. Shotgun Scout's doing about the same amount of damage as the Tactical Marine model, one for one. So this is the equivalent of like eight attacks. Except for with a fire and move. Meme on top, a lot of grouping up here. Max is devastated, is able to get suppression onto multiple squads. We need to split those squads up, or we need to just get outside the arc. And here's the Immolator. Here for Zetalk with the Immolator ability onto the triple Dire Avengers there of Agaxis. Zetalk going to be leaping in there with the Warlock, and Max is going to be forced off. Should be able to get one model, but the Warlock using Destructor instead of actually trying to attack those tactical Marines and using the Destructor 
slowing him down actually goes down himself. Tech Ring is very low, but will be able to escape just barely there. And the group being here from Matus Ken Z Talk and the Lord Commissar there with the Power Sword is inspiring the entire army. Triple grenades all in the same spot there. Want to try and spread those grenades out a little bit after the grenades were slightly more south. They may even wipe the scout squad here, but Devastator's resetting up as a guarded weapons team behind it. It's going to be a very difficult position to push here, and I don't think there's a good idea here for Zito to try and come in through the flank at bottom here. There's just a loss of protection around this beacon, and with these buildings here as well, it makes it very difficult to push against because they are shot blockers. Right, in bottom, the APO has gone down here for Ven. Can be repurchased via Laramin's Blessing, costing only red later on. But Ven is going to be without an APO for quite some time here. Bring these at APO to actually heal up these ASMs since they're going to be taking a lot of damage here from the Force Commander. And these double shotgun scouts with a lot of burst damage. We need to keep them on the field. But Ven actually repurchasing his APO here. And Blue Team successfully holding their beacon is now going to go in for a push themselves. Max with Flame at Tactical Marines on the field as he took with the repurchase or the revive, sorry, of his commander. The warlock is going to sit in the awkward area, although these units extremely grouped have the perfect opportunity here for an immolate ability to go down, but the warlock without enough energy to actually immolate that area. These dire avengers would have been forced to resume their gen bash later on if the immolate ability was available here for Zetok. The Castions on the field here could easily knock back all these units away, but a very nice flare here from Matuska is going to force the rest of the army to go away here unless they want to push in even further forward which is not the best decision for them. You need to be careful here, the flare is now in the Devastators far and away here but Sparta Shell here from Matuska going to come in, going to knock those Devastators forward here. We always want to knock Devastators forward so you can actually get in some attacks there and actually try and take down some models since they do cost power to reinforce but Z-Talk in a bit of an awkward position there with his Dire Avengers here taking a lot of damage on the squad already forced off here. And there's Guardian Weapons team here, so this commissar is going to get suppressed here in the end. In fact, he may even take a bit too much damage here by trying to go in. The Tech Marine is going to get forced off, and a grenade is getting thrown onto the retreat path here. Going to be able to take down the entire scout squad here. Scouts for max power is going to go down here. I'm surprised the sergeant actually died there as well, but the sergeant must have been quite low to die to that grenade. But the Farseer coming in here for a Gux is going to tie up the Star Avenger squad here. Star Avengers actually leaping into combat there against the Farseer, landing the special. We'll leap into combat here and we'll be forced off here. We get immolate onto the Dire Avengers here. Going to be very nice with the Destructor, but the Warlock in the end is going to get focused down and will end up going down here, especially if Guide is used. And guide is used on one squad here as well. And that's going to be a dead squad, or not a dead squad, sorry, but a dead commander. The players nice to take up now to tier 2. Double shotgun scouts here in the bottom side. The elite training is available here for both squads. You can see the health regen coming in now. The elite training upgrade, not just for the infiltration, but also gives you health regeneration and energy regeneration when you are not in combat. And even if you take damage on your scouts, you're still technically not in combat. You have to actually use your weapons or abilities to be in combat. So even when someone else is attacking you, if you don't attack them, you've still got that health regen and energy regen and allows your scouts to actually get away on retreat so much more just because of that insane health regen on retreat. Especially when you have more models. Guide Weapons team going to get forced off here at the threat of the grenade here from the Dire Avengers. Farsi was able to get a decap onto this fully matured requisition point in the top side of the map. ASM going to be engaging him with the Force Commander with the Thunder Hammer. Double ASM is definitely not the way to go against the Force Commander here. Especially when he gets that Thunder Hammer in tier 2. Especially when there's double shotgun scouts on the field here. Then will struggle with this build here, the APO as well, going to be engaging here with the Sanguine Chainsaw, no other accessories or war gear on him just yet, one ASM squad is forced off with just a single model, the sergeant coming in quite late there, and Force Commander is going to be able to take down multiple models here, it's that special as well, it's definitely going to secure him a couple of models here, at the very least, the sergeant's out in the front and will live overall, but another model has gone down, if the Force Commander had a teleport to pack, he could have taken down a third or fourth model here from these ASM by teleporting ahead. Head Castigen's there with the only reliable on retreats, unable to actually get down any models. Very effective in retreats here, but Ven's build is not the wisest choice there against the Force Commander. Black Label should be able to secure the bottom power and hold it. P-Devs coming out now for a max. Going to be taking down two Fire Dragon models, Plasma Cannon damage, very effective against heavy infantry here. Fire Dragons are also now heavy infantry, so more vulnerable to Plasma Fire and also Inferno damage as well. 
but then starting to make his way now towards the mid side of the map, knowing that he can't actually push against Blossom here. The double ASM going to be very ineffective against that Force Commander. The Apo going to be healing himself, engaging with the Sanguine Chainsword, but the Apo without any armor of his own or without any leveling of his own is very squishy there, only 600 HP. Meanwhile, Guxus is also coming down as well to assist Ven here in pushing Matuska off. Black Label is making his way up now, and Max is going to try and fight Zetalk here. Grenade gained from gain stuff on some strain there, almost mid air. Plasma Devastator is going to be firing away from afar, and Gux is coming up now here. P Devs though, going to do a bit of friendly fire damage there. Okay, actually going to yeah, miss that Falcon there. But the Manticore Strike. Catching that Falcon out there with two rear armor hits. If Zetalk has any grenades, he can try to throw him on the Falcon, although the chances of him hitting the Falcon are quite slim. Black Label going for double plasma tactical marines here. Very nice choice here. Angels of Death here is a really good choice here for Ven, so they can't get knocked over by the specials from that Force Commander. The Force Commander also unable to be knocked back by that Merciless Strike because of the Battle Cry that's activated, although Ven is still taking a lot of damage here. And could even use an ASM, especially if there were retreat grenades coming out here for Black Label. And now the Angel's Death has worn out. Then we will need to be a bit careful. That Scout Squad will definitely live unless the ASM can jump once again. The ASM lacking 10 energy to be able to jump. Mass Plasma and Tactical Marines are definitely the way to go if someone's spamming infantry as a Space Marine player. And the Sergeant goes down. Another model goes down. These Plasma Attacks are really doing a lot of work here. The Plasma Attacks with the Force Commander, with the Sacred Standard, with the Battle Cry. We're going to be doing 25% from the Sacred Standard and an extra 10% from the Battle Cry for a 35% damage boost on your Plasma Guns. And when you get multiple Plasma Attacks on Marines, the amount of burst damage you do allows you to just take models before the fight has even properly begun. And allows you to actually win in Space Marine mirror matches, I find. Comes here too, of course. At 459 VPs to 262 here. Blue team are ahead in VPs by quite a bit here. This beacon providing them with a lot of staying power on the field. Not even to retreat all the way back to base, but retreating to the beacon to remain on the field. But P devs as well. Going to try and destroy this bunker for some reason. I think Max is just ground targeting for some reason. Destructor and Immolate here onto the Guardian Weapons team. The Guardian Weapons team seems to be able to tank that Immolator here. And wow, what the heck was that? Must have been a P dev shot that went off there. That was a lot of guardsmen going down here. In fact, nearly losing multiple squads there of guardsmen and catachins here. But Guxus is coming in here as well. And there's a Manticore Strike going to go down here, but it's actually going to miss these units here. Devastates able to retreat away so they don't take too much damage here. Fire Dragons are in the area, so this Falcon will need to be a little bit careful, but the Wraith Guard are also still here on the field. But Wraith Guard, I don't think, will be able to instantly suppress Fire Dragons. I don't know how much courage damage they do per shot, but Fire Dragons have 200 courage here. Grenades all placed down on the same sweet route. Ideally, want to try and spread them out a little bit. Um, can be a bit annoying to do, especially on a retreat grenade where you need to be fairly quick to actually do it. But Fire Dragon's going to go in very aggressively here, but they're running towards the beacon here. It's not the best choice. A lot of units in the area have uh, retreated away from the previous engagement, and they will force these Fire Dragons away. Plasma Devastator's going to hit some more buildings here. All the buildings so far are remaining alive. You know, Black Label is pushing up through the bottom here, then without any tactical marines, just with double ASM and scouts here. And scouts are currently unupgraded completely. The APO as well has now gone for the purification rites, which he needed something on the APO. Purification rites will help knock away some other units, especially when his ASM decides to engage some tactical marines, can get an extra knockback and knocking back all the units in the area. The Falcon, though, just needs to be careful of the Melter Gun on these Catachins. No bionic eye on that Lord Commissar, so it doesn't need to be too scared of the Melter Gun. Over a last cannon here from Black Label, getting a single shot, so that Falcon is most definitely going to go down here. All the Dire Avengers now having to vacate that vehicle as it blows up there. Force Commander going to be engaging these ASMs, and ASMs are going to be forced off here, taking so much damage here as Red Team starts to group up towards the bottom side of the map here. The APO and Scouts. Scouts definitely going to go down here. The APO will be able to live over all these Dire Avengers though, trying to do what they can. The Embolden is getting used here, you can see the yellow glowing around them. And the Embolden has now worn off, and the Force Commander with the Sacred Standard is a nice purchase here. But may need to consider getting a Teleporter pack later on as he starts fighting other opponents. While fighting Ben, the Sacred Standard is an excellent choice, but while fighting, say, the Triple Dire Avengers of Guxus, he will maybe need a Teleporter pack so it doesn't take so much damage trying to get into melee combat. 
first boss shot here, going to knock everyone away, plus the Devastator, we're about to start firing away there on Matuska's army. The Guxus is coming in here with the Wraith Guard, Matuska, we need to remain on the move here, Devastators are set up here to tie up that Lord Commissar, the Stubbornness bonus is massive right now, with the amount of friendly units in the area, the Power Sword is trying to do what he can here, but that Commissar is taking a little bit too much damage, these Wraith Guard have been too much of a pain, the Commissar should really go down and time up, so Matuska can use the rest of his army, and Matuska's Strike is going to come down here on Stu. It looks like his own units almost. <laughs> looks like it was aimed at Matuska's own army there. Maybe he was expecting the Guxes to chase a little bit further here. But the Warlock with the Immolator, the Lord Commissar with the Power Sword, trying to take down a couple of models here. The Power Sword is going to be a bit more effective than that Immolator. The Standing Guards and Guard Weapons team set up in the air, and Zizor is most definitely going to go down here, even if he had a little bit more health. These Devastators at point blank range would have been quite painful as well. Black Labor trying to make his way all the way to the top. Meanwhile, Ven is still trying to push in through bottom. Does have some Vanguard veterans which will help out against the Space Marine army. And the Force Command with the Battle Cry is still going to be it's too scary unless the Angels of Death is at space to get that knockback immunity. Webway Gate is placed down there by a Gux as Farsi with the far side able to see in the fog of war for 35 red and can't place down gates in that area that you're looking at. Can be quite annoying playing against Farsi because of that. Especially on the larger maps where you can get gates almost anywhere and hide them very well. But PDF shot, they're going to come in, going to be very painful here, taking down multiple guards with models. And who's got forced to back off there a little bit. Second plasma devastator shot is going to fail there. A flare is going to drop down here, and the Manticore should have vision now of this area. And the Manticore strike is going to be following up onto this beacon here as well, with mines as well. Here, the mines are going to get decimated by the Manticore. And there's a singularity going to go down here on top of the beacon as well. This is absolutely brutal here, this is why beacons can go wrong, because you're so grouped up and everyone's retreating to the same beacon. But it makes it even more susceptible to AoE threats such as the Manticore Strike, such as the Singularity. Vanguard Veterans trying to engage here, there's just so many units here for Red Team up in this area. And Blue Team, all at the beacon, all extremely low here, they are starting to reinforce now. There's a drop pod that has just come out here for max power, you can see these tactical Marines are fresh, no experience whatsoever. Drop pod reinforcing all units of Guxes as fast here, very low. And the PDEVs are trying to hit some units here, but actually hitting the building mainly to ground target, so they actually fire between this corridor here. Tech Marine is currently down on the ground. Fire Drag is going in a little bit too far here. The Fire Drag should pull out here for Z Talk. Plasma Devastator is going to fire some more shots. These two buildings getting a bit low, but the buildings are fairly tanky at 2,500 HP a piece when starting out. Manticore though is such a good purchase against a beacon come tier 2 and a decanon as well will be able to pay for itself in no time. The P devastators here as well for Black Label, the Farsi again knocked down the ASM immune to knock back when they start to jump and just after they shortly jump they will be caught out here by the Singularity though but the Singularity actually gets cancelled as the decanon decides to unset up here. But some more PDF shots here, going to be knocking those ASM down, but unable to actually take down any models since you don't really take too much damage from plasma cannon damage. But PDF's actually able to fire over this bunker and hit those Dire Avengers here. Seeing the D cannon up as well for a Guxus. And the VP is getting denied here with the Immolator onto the ground here. Some more PDF shots. Vanguard Veterans going to be engaging here for Ven, but Ven is currently unsupported here. He's only with the Apo and only with. <laughs> Some Vanguard veterans here, and just taking an insane amount of damage here. The April getting caught out by friendly fire Vanguards as well. Going to go down here. I'm not sure why Ven chose to engage there by himself with just a couple of units. These PDOs though are going to be very annoying. Here yeah, for Max Power, where he decides to retreat them where they are quite alone and have revealed themselves. And Wraith Guard going to be very annoying here from Gux is going to tear down this generator farm. And Wraith Guard can always just enter the gate as an escape method. If they try to retreat away at this point, then they would most definitely go down. But Singularity time field here for a Guxus, very nice combination. There is no beacon here for a red team, so we'll have to run all the way back to base. In fact, the one of the bunkers has actually gone down. Two spotters died here. Or only one spotter died, something else died as well. But at the same time, very annoying combination time field, slowing all units down to just 40%, I believe. Or by 40%. But more Vanguard veterans here for Ben. This was his second ASM squad 
And since he can only have one Vanguard squad at a time, and since he lost his Vanguards, he now has another one, a Matical Strike, going to be hitting Blue Team quite hard here. The retreat comes in slightly too late here for Max, he does take the full brunt of that first rock here. Force Commander is going to be walking up here. Gux is going to be forced off. Terminator is going to get called down here by the looks of it. Terminator is from Max Power going to be the ranged variant. He is the Tech Marine, so he only has access to the ranged variant. And Ven actually has a Land Raider Redeem assisting on top of this beacon here, but everyone is so grouped up here. This is the prime opportunity for a Manticore Strike once it comes off cooldown. Drop a flare on top of the beacon to give yourself vision and use it to try and hurt your opponent. You know, Matuska's Castachin's there, and the Lord Commissar is going to be coming in. These P-Dev states are going to be retreated back to base, but the Lord Commissar is left alone right now. He's getting that Bionic Eye upgrade, but needs to stay close to his units for that stubbornness bonus so he can remain in combat for a long time, but... Wow, but he's gone for the Bionic Guy. is only down to 800 HP. He did have a 1,000 before. 800 HP is still a lot. But 1,000 HP with the stubbornness bonus makes Lord Commissar so difficult to kill since the stubbornness healing is percentage-based, so the more health you have, the more health you regenerate each time you regenerate health. Land Raider Redeemer is going to be acting as a mobile beacon now for blue team. But it also has a healing bonus, or so does the beacon as well. And you can again get on set up here. Terminators with the Cyclone Missile Barrage are going to be very effective against any vehicles that do pop up on the map later on. Also very effective against blobs of infantry, some flaming tactical marines, and some unupgraded tactical marines here on the field as well. Manticore Strike going to come down. That Force Command is going to go down here. Going to be providing a 40% damage boost because he does have that sacred standard. These Terminators though gain a little bit low, but the Whirlwind is going to come in, preventing these tactical marines with plasma guns to fire away at these Terminators, and then moving his land raider now down to the natural VP here, but red team still in control of the contested VP, bringing blue team very low on VP is 114 to 237. Wraithguard are infiltrated here, but there's not really much that they can do, and they're going to be incredibly slow if they're going to try and come in for a flank in the fight, so this will have to be timed fairly well here for a red team. Or for looting, rather. Meanwhile, Predator is out here for Ven, but there is no repair support for this Predator whatsoever. No scouts on the map. We need to rely on a Gugsus for repairs with his Double Dire Avengers, or Ven will need to purchase some scouts of his own for repair support. But Blue Team goes to be pushing now towards the bottom side of the map with that Land Raid Redeemer that can push wherever they want and retreat to it at all times. The Cyclone Missile Barrage is going to be catching out the Manticore, is going to be catching out the bunker here, unable to take down either one though, but that Manticore is extremely low. Wraithguard are pushing in, one orbital on the bunker is enough to kill it, and going to be catching out Black Label's army here, going to catch out his Devastators, his Tactical Marines, his D-Cannon is also going to get caught out, this Predator with still no repair support whatsoever, the Force Commander here for Black Label is going to get a little bit caught out as well, Tactical Marines, everyone's forced here to almost retreat for Blue Team, or for Red Team. Double Plasma Devastators here for Black Label, going to be very effective at pushing against entrenched places such as the Beacon, such as that Land Raider Redeemer as well. Plasma guns, plasma cannons, I'm sorry, going to be doing some decent damage here. Taking down a second Terminator here as well, and Predator is getting repaired here by the blessings of the Omnizire, the Tech Marine Global. Vanguard veterans able to dodge those two plasma gun plasma cannon hits. But the Vanguard's going to be left a little bit unsupported here. They do have a predator in the area. And these PMs actually doing a little bit of friendly fire damage. But it is worth it because those Vanguards are definitely going to go down here. The Barnic Eye onto the catches, but the whirlwind coming in with the last second rocket here is going to be enough to save these Vanguards here. Down to just 50 HP, they will be able to survive with a two model squad. And the Manticore gonna get caught out there by the Cyclone Missile Barrage here. The single Terminator, or no, it's two Terminators now, they're actually reinforcing from that Land Raider. Going to be falling back to it anyway, and that Predator is going to get caught out here for Ven. Fire Dragons pushing in here. The Fire Dragons look like they're unable to catch up, but the Predator is mispathing here. Grenades from Zizel could also be very effective against vehicles as well, but it's not actually needed here. The Blue Team is still in control though of that top VP and able to actually push down the natural here of Red Team. Red Team with plenty more units on according to the user interface, but I'm able to actually push themselves. There is Guardian Weapons team up top and the Gux is, is prepared to defend against Zetalk here. Meanwhile, in the bottom side, Ven and Max are going to be using that land raid to that mobile base just to have so much staying power in comparison to Red Team who currently have none of that whatsoever. But a fresh Manticore has come out now for Matuska. It's a very wise idea to replace the Manticore here because it has done so much work so far. 
I heard a drop pod is actually going to be for a Ven in the bottom side of the map. It's a bit of a strange drop pod. It didn't reinforce anything, and unless you really wanted a tactical marine squad, I don't think it was necessary. Especially given that he has a lot of power, he could have gotten a second predator or could have gotten anything else other than a new tactical marine squad. It's now tier 3 in the game. But some scouts going to come in here with some grenades, going to be thrown onto the same target here. Going to hatch out that guarded weapons team. The guarded weapons team will live. The knockback from the first grenade knocked it a little bit too far away from that second grenade. But the time field wailing doom combination, though, from the Gux is going to be absolutely brutal to these tactical marines here, slowing them down to the point where they can't really dodge it at all unless they instantly hit retreat. But Ogrins on the field here, they will be forced off though the Doombring on the fast, he has doomed them, the avatar is potentially guided here, there is a yellow circle around him and Vanguard veterans jumping in, these Ogrins will not stand a chance whatsoever, especially with that Doom ability, as it's like they have no melee resistance whatsoever, but they will be able to live overall, the Bonehead did go down in that engagement. And Lord Commissar as well going in a little bit too deep here. The Force Commander is trying to support him as much as possible. The Lord Commissar could actually turn and fight. He is level 8. Does have a fair amount of health and energy remaining here. And Force Commander with that power fist going to be fisting some Vanguard veterans here. D Cannon also doing a shot here. You can see the AoE melts the damage. Doing quite a bit of damage here. Vanguard's down to just two models here. I thought they would have going to lose another model, but the Force Commander has upgraded mid-fight to a Terminator Force Commander and actually cancelled this attack against those Vanguards. Battle Cry activated that Power Fist, does the same amount of damage as any other Power Fist. Well, most other Power Fists at 95. It can always be upgraded and still does to get to keep that Power Fist as well, which is so good against vehicles, so good against everything actually since it's heavy melee, but D Cannons and Plasma Devastators here Going to be firing away, going to be missing their shots in IED on the ground as well here from Catachins. The Stern Guard veteran is going to be going down here for Venna. And these were the tactical marines that came out of that drop pod just a little bit earlier. Force Commander is running away, the Terminator Force Commander rather. But P Dev is going to get forced off here, the D Cannon also forced off as Max decides to push through here in a bit of an awkward place. The red team having nothing here but artillery and support units and able to actually defend themselves here but some plasma guardsmen are on the way. Some vanguard veterans are going to be jumping onto the VP need to not make the same mistake as the stand guard veterans where they died. Terminator is going to be teleporting defensively here to get away. Plasma devastators with a very nice shot there into those tactical marines. I don't to take down any models but definitely bring the squad down very low to the point where they are going to get forced off. 63 VPs to 138 Blue team are very entrenched here in mid with that land raid at Redeemer. Really need some nukes here for red team. In fact, they do actually have nukes available. Black label on 999 red Z talk on 720. A combination of an Eldritch and an Orbital could be very brutal here for blue team to actually deal with. And blue team should maybe just go in for the triple bottom and use their nukes together. D cannon wow, actually getting sniped there. Orbs of Abandon is going to go down now here. Might catch out Max Power's army here. The first beam going to catch out some tactical marines. Second beam going to catch out a couple more tactical marines here. But I think they should have wasted. They should have forced the retreat to the Land Raider Redeemer and then done the nukes together, both the Eldritch and Orbital. So that it would have been unavoidable. Terminator's Force Command going to be fighting Vanguards here with some nice use of the purification valves in the late game to knock over the scouts and actually let them die. Avatar going to be infiltrated here. I'm not sure infiltrated the Avatar though. The Avatar with the Wailing Doom though going to catch out some Guardsmen here. The Guardsmen will be able to live overall. One Guardsman squad did just lose their Commissar upgrade. Can, can always be repurchased if needed. But then with the Land Raider here going to be so entrenched here. And with the beacon remaining top as well for Guxus to use while he holds the topmost VP as well. It's going to be very difficult here for Red Team to actually do much about it. Another Manticore is coming out here for Matuska. And Avatar is coming out for Zetor, but I'm worried that it's not going to be out in time. There is only a 2 to 1 cap, so they do actually have quite a bit of time here. Tech Room getting caught out there by his own Terminator Cycle and Missile Raj the Cat. Commissar there with the Ogres able to actually finish him off. These Terminators are also a little bit mispositioned here. We need to use their teleport to actually escape away here for the Whirlwind though. Has also done a quite a lot of work as well this game. Able to knock down units when it really does matter. The Warlock here is just going to get absolutely obliterated. Just goes and pushes forward, but the full auto there from the Apo knocks him down. 
I'm not actually sure what the Warlock was attempting to do. I think he was trying to get vision potentially, but there's just P-Devs everywhere here from Black Label and Max Power here. Manticore cool Strike onto the natural VP there of Red Team to try and protect the Cashins. Are only area terminators do dodge it for the most part. There's an Elder Storm going to go down, going to catch out some Tactical Marines here of Max's. These Tactical Marines level 4 will actually be able to survive the Eldritch, even though they retreated through it. I'm surprised they actually did survive it. Vanguard veterans able to fight this Terminator Force Commander here. The Terminator Force Commander with still his default weapon doom onto the Avatar here. A Gux is going to chase the Avatar. The blue one is from z -Talk, and the standard color one is from... Wow. That Wailing Doom. Sorry. Time Field and Wailing Doom combination. Time Field has been so annoying. The arm of the Assyrian on the Farsia has been doing so much work here for a Gux in this game. Land Raider still remains resolute there. The APO going to be retreating back here. The Avatar here for z -Talk has already gone quite low in comparison to a Gux as he remains on nearly full health here. The Barnak Eye execution though. Going to chase down the Avatar. Going to try and path and try and chase down a Whirlwind. But the Ogre is actually getting path blocked by the enemy Avatar here. Very unfortunate for them. Not a Land Raider. It still remains up there. Black Label calling out that there is a Land Raider there. Unless he's got his own one coming out. He actually has his own one coming out. 63 VPs to 42 here. Plasma Devastators are so low here for Ven. And they will actually... He obviously live here as they do reinforce just in time here. Meanwhile, the Lord Commissar does go down. We can't really see it, man. It's the hail of bullets and flames there. There is now an enemy Land Raider Redeemer here. But I'm not sure if it's going to be here in time. Manticore Strike going to go down here with some mines. A very nice combination to detonate these mines with a Manticore for some bonus damage here. Unfortunately, this Land Raider Redeemer here for Venom remains on 1,900 HP. Time Field used once again here for Guxus. There's also the Wailing Doom as well at the same time will be avoided for the most part. Any tactical marines getting caught out here. These vanguards chasing in a little bit too aggressively here. Losing two models. Going to lose the entire squad here. The frag assaults from that Land Raider Redeem is going to be a bit too much. Meanwhile, Guardsmen trying to push in through top. But a Singularity is going to pull in the entire squad here. Going to wipe a squad as well. Going to be unable to actually get a decap. In fact, Matuska is going to lose all his Guardsmen in trying to push that top most VP. Black Flavor's commander is getting a little bit low. Ven going to go in very aggressive here with the decap, and it's going to be game anyway. It's a two to one cap. In fact, no, the decap here onto the natural VP by Zetok. Ven, if he gets this decap, will be able to end the game here, and it looks like he will be able to. He sacrificed his own terminators just to end the game here, and blue team will be able to win for game here. Red team unable to actually push against the very defensive play here of blue team with that beacon with this land raider redeemer later on in the game manti cores were not enough in this game all the artillery was not enough to actually push against the fortified position of blue team